Hello students, uh, hope you have been doing all the numericals of uh, work energy and power. Now we are in the very last uh, phase of this numericals. I will just help you to do the homework questions that I gave. Uh, these questions are, some of them are a little tricky. I thought I will solve all of them or some of them I could just give you some directions to solve and this is the last video of work, energy and power. So this is based on conservation of momentum and collision. Already uh, 29 and 30 already all we have done it. So 31 to 36 it was given as a homework. Some of you would have tried it and some of you would have not finished it but I thought I will uh, go along side of your efforts to do this numerical and then help you so that you can also do it much better. Question number 31 will do. A stationary bomb, now look at this one, it is a stationary bomb. So what is the initial velocity of the bomb? Zero. And um, it is exploding into two fragments of masses, 0.4 kg and 4 kg. So it is now just uh, giving a good explosion and finally it is splitting into two parts. The bigger fragment that is 4 kilogram has a kinetic energy of the kinetic energy of that is 100 joules. So the kinetic energy is 100 joules. Find the kinetic energy of the smaller fragment. So that's the question here. So the small mass is going to be equal to 0 0.4 kg and the bigger mass is 4 kg. Right? And uh, the initial velocity is 0 because it was already at rest. Now the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the uh, larger fragment, okay. So kinetic energy of the one of the particles, the larger one, okay. I can say it is going to be kinetic energy of large one. So we need to find out the kinetic energy of smaller fragment is question mark right so according to law of conservation of momentum what happens it is 0 0.4 right this one 0 0.4 into u1 plus 4 kg into u2 is he going to be equal to 0 0.4 into v1 plus 4 kg into v2 now this entire stuff is 0 right this is u1 is also 0 it is a stationary body u is totally 0 so what happens 0 0.4 v1 plus 4 into v2 so that is the value you get here is equal to be equal to 0 so it can be going in two different velocities so 0 0.4 v1 is going to be equal to minus of 4 into v2 so v1 is going to be equal to minus 4 into 0 0.4 v2 so v1 going to be equal to so this will get cancelled out so this is going to be 10 times of v2 minus will be coming so this 10 times of v2 is going to be there so magnitude wise magnitude magnitude of v1 is going to be equal to 10 v2 is the just a magnitude not a direction because it is going opposite direction but it is just a magnitude all right now if this is v1 is going to be equal to 10 times of v2 now we can also find out what is v2 is right so kinetic energy of large fragment so it's going to be equal to 100 joules so half m v2 square is going to be equal to 100 joules so half into so it is going to be 4 into v2 is going to be equal to 100 2 v2 square is going to be equal to this 2 will go down it will become 50 so what is v2 is going to be equal to 150 
so that's a meter per second now we can easily find out what is v1 what is v1 because it's going to be equal to 10 times of v2 which is going to be equal to 10 times of 150 meter per second that is v1 now you are supposed to find out the kinetic energy of the smaller fragment so half m um, v2 square v1 square you can write it's going to be equal to half into 0 0.4 smaller fragment is 0 0.4 what is v1 it is this much 10 into 150 the whole square this one it will get 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 and 10 it will become 2 right 0 0.2 and 10 it will become no no it's going to be here so 0 0.2 into 100 into 50 so what will be the total value will be there it will become equal to 1000 joules that is the final answer alright hope it helps we have done methodically please see what we have done law of conservation of energy momentum law of conservation of momentum and we got the relationship between v1 and v2 then we found what is v2 using this first formula of kinetic energy we found what is v2 and the relationship helped us to find v1 so this relationship helped us to find v1 because v1 is equal to 10 times of v2 so we found because of v2 was there we were able to find out v2 we have substituted and got v1 and because of v1 we were able to find out this kinetic energy of the smaller fragment okay we'll go to the next question now question number 32 a neutron mass of neutron 1.67 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms moving at a speed of velocity of neutron 1 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second collides with a deuteron mass of deuteron is 3.34 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms at rest the initial velocity the initial velocity of neutron is zero at rest okay. sticks to it and it gets stuck to it all right find the speed of the composite particle triton so you it's going to be striking together and doing it i am going to ask you to do this one yourself you need to do it yourself but i'll just quickly mention how to do this mn into vn this is the momentum of the neutron plus md into zero because the deuteron is at rest it's going to be equal to it goes going to after it collides it is stuck together sticks to it it is sticking to this both of them both the masses are stuck together and you get a v right so this is already zero mn into vn both of them are here add both this one you have to add both of them into V and into find out V. Please try to find out yourself. Right? We will go to the next question. Question number 33. Look at question number 33. A 20 kg mass which is moving with the speed of 10 meter per second. So, question number 33. It is 20 kg mass m1 is 20 kg and then moving with the speed of u1 is going to be equal to 10 meter per second so m1 u1 and it is striking a stationary mass stationary mass means it is m2 is 5 kg u2 what is u2 stationary 0 all right after collision after collision the mass is sticks together m1 plus m2 sticks together so 20 plus 5 25 kg and the combination moves so now first of all there are all things you need to find out one by one okay so first of all you need to find out v that's will be very very helpful for you rest everything is known the final mass is known final velocity is known initial masses are there 
एम वन यू वन प्लस एम टू यू टू इज गोन टू बिकल टू एम वन प्लस एम टू इन टू वी सो इट इज गोन टू बिकल टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इन टू वी एंड दिस इज गोन टू बिकल टू जीरो राइट ओनली दिस इज रिमेनिंग सो इट इज गोन टू बी ट्वेंटी इन टू टेन राइट ट्वेंटी इंटू टेन So twenty into ten is going to be equal to twenty-five v. Pretty simple. V is going to be equal to so twenty into ten divided by twenty-five. So you will get eight meter per second. So eight meter per second will be the answer. It's only given here eight meter per second. Right? Then based on that, you can find out. What is the B part? What was the kinetic energy of the whole system before the collision? Whole system before the collision. This whole kinetic energy. What is that? This kinetic energy is anyhow not there because U is U to zero. Only this will remain. So you can find out this and give the answer. C part. What is the kinetic energy after collision? Now this we have found out as eight. So what is the kinetic energy after collision? You can find out the total mass and then total V. Half m v square. You can find out that will become kinetic energy. What is the remaining kinetic energy? This kinetic energy minus this kinetic energy. You just subtract. You will get the remaining kinetic energy. Please do it. I am just leaving it to you. Okay. Question number thirty-four. So question number thirty-four. It says a body of mass two kg moving with a velocity of Three meter per second. It's very important. M one, U one, M two, U two. You should have to write. It collides heads on, head on, uh, with the second body of mass. M two is one kg. Okay, from an opposite direction with a velocity of U two is going to be equal to minus four meter per second. This is the way in which it coming. One body is going in one direction. It's going in one direction. Another body is coming in opposite direction. It collides head on. After collision, the two bodies stick together. So, what does it mean by that? So, both the bodies are sticking together and moving. So, after collision, m1 plus m2 is going to be equal to 3 kg. Find the velocity of the body which is stuck together and going. I think you can easily find out. So m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is going to be equal to m1 plus m2 into v. Right? You need to find out v. Everything is given there. You can find out easily. That is question number thirty-four. Here there is minus, so you have to put minus and then get get it. Okay? Let us go to the next question. Question number thirty-five. Question number thirty-five. We'll try. Okay. So in this question, what happens is there is a slight uh, question number thirty-five and thirty-six has a similar variety, but you need to know how to go about. A proton of mass, mass of proton one point six into six seven ten to the power of minus twenty-seven kg collides elastically head-on with an alpha particle. So mass of alpha particle is six point six eight ten to the power of minus twenty seven kg, right? But look at this one. This is one point six seven and this one six point six eight. So just do it in calculator. Mass of alpha is six point six eight divided by mass of proton, which is one point six seven ten to the power of minus twenty seven, and this also ten to the power of minus twenty seven. So what you can do? This will be a kind of a thing. You can cancel it. When you do this one, the mass of alpha particle will be how much? How many times? It will be four times. If you just cancel it, it will become four times. It will be four times of mass of the. So you get a value which is four times of the proton. So you will be if this is m, this is four m. Okay, you should know this one. So after collision, the alpha particle moves with the speed of. Right, so v alpha is going to eight into ten to the power of five meter per second. Find the speed of the proton before and after collision. So 
u of proton question mark v of proton also is question mark v alpha is given here right so initially at rest is there so what is the mass of the alpha particle the velocity of alpha particle is given here so velocity of the alpha particle initially is it is equal to zero so that's already u zero so u p the proton initial velocity and proton final velocity is question mark okay so first of all m is the first body m1 equal to m and m2 is going to be equal to 4m try to understand this combination because based on alpha m alpha is equal to 4 times of mass of proton so m is equal to m1 is going to be equal to just an m and m2 is going to be equal to 4m m and 4m okay now i think you should understand remember the previous uh, time whatever the final formula that you would derived in the collisions v1 is equal to and then v2 is going to be equal to if you see that one that the expression was quite big denominator was m1 m2 please see how i am writing this formula you would have to memorize this formula but there is a strategic way of memorizing it also the masses are added always what is this one here it is going to be equal to subtraction of the masses m1 minus m2 you should remember this top part of it into u1 the initial velocity of the first body and here the next expression should be u2 u1 u2 will be there and what is this one it is going to be 2 times of m2 2 times of m2 into u2 if you frame the first equation the second equation automatically you can write yourself wherever one is there put 2 m2 wherever 2 is there put 1 m1 u1 will become u2 here m1 and m2 same so you can put m1 plus m2 same way itself and here 2 times of m1 this is 2 will become 1 m1 plus m2 right now look at this one let us try to strategize according to this one right according to this particular thing so it becomes obvious here that the initial velocity of p is asked vp is asked and this one is asked but this velocity is zero so if i want to translate here accordingly right this is u1 this is v1 and this is u2 u2 is zero and this is v2 v2 is only given there u1 v1 u2 v2 now look at this one u2 first of all you put at zero u2 is zero so look at the expression and put u2 zero this one will be zero u2 zero and u2 zero this also will be zero so this whole thing revolves under this expression only with the first expression standing now one expression standing now so what is v1 write down since u2 is going to be equal to zero v1 equal to m1 minus m2 into u1 upon m1 plus m2 and v2 is going to be equal to 2 m1 u1 upon m1 plus m2 right so now you got this two expression now now how to go about already i said this one is m and m2 is 4m so we can just substitute and find out how it is coming up right so it will be quite easy to find out one of the expression and then you can go to the next expression also so first of all let us take v2 v2 is already given there v2 is 8 into 10 to the power of v2 is 8 into 10 to the power of this one so we'll go ahead of this one 8 into 10 to the power of 5 is going to be equal to 2m i'm putting it as m into u1 upon m plus m2 is 4m because we know this one already it is that's the way it is uh, so m1 is m and next one m2 is 4m so if, if that's the case 8 into 10 to the power of 5 is going to be equal to 2m upon 5m into u1 
mass gets cancelled out. So what is u1 is going to be equal to 5 into 8 into 10 to the power of 5 upon 2. This gets cancelled out. So u1 is going to be equal to 20 into 10 to the power of 5 meter per second. This is u1. What is u1? The velocity of proton. Initial velocity of proton. So it becomes up is going to be equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 6 also you can say. Two. Instead of 20 I will put 2. Now u1 you can substitute here. u1 you can put it here in this one. This expression as u1. So v1 is going to be equal to m minus 4m times of 2 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by m plus 4m minus 3m upon 5m into 2 into 10 to the power of 6 mass gets cancelled out so what's the answer now it's going to be you would just finalize the answer now it is 6 by 5 10 to the power of 6 so 1.2 into 10 to the power of 5 meter per second that is v1 okay so very very careful point is you should know this full x2 expressions v1 and v2 and u2 is going to be equal to 0 u2 is here 0 and then it came up to these two expressions here v1 and then v2 and then we went on to say substitute one of this expression and then got this answer and then this answer it was fitting it here and then we got the another answer v1 and u1 and v1 we were able to find out okay i would suggest just close this book now close the notebook and try to do this question once again that will be very very helpful for you quite a simple question but it has a lot of things in it all right we'll go to the next question now question number 36 36 we'll try to find out okay so what is question number 36 so I would say take these two expressions again okay and then see this question a particle of mass 1.8 into 10 to the power of minus 27 moving with the speed of 10 to the power of 6 meter per second collides with another particle of mass this much with initial velocity at rest same things initial velocity at rest is second body so what is m1 m1 is 1.8 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg so we call it as m okay what is m2 3.6 into 10 to the power of minus 27 kg that is m2 what you can call this you can call it 2m because this is 1.8 this is 3.6 everything is same so m and 2m m1 is going to be equal to m m2 is going to be equal to 2m and what is u1 u1 we don't know okay and what is u2 u2 is going to be equal to 0 because initially at rest second particle was at rest okay and the collision was elastic collision so this entire expressions it maintains the part of a elastic collision this one is an elastic collision derivation mm -hmm. so what happens u2 0 this is 0 what will happen here this is 0 and you can substitute and m and 2m is there m and 2m is also there so what is the value here so you have moving with the speed of 10 to the power of 6 so what is u1 u1 is 10 to the power of 6 meter per second so here u1 is already there let us find out v1 is going to be equal to m minus 2m into 10 to the power of 6 upon m plus 2m so it's going to be minus m upon 3m 10 to the power of 6 m gets cancelled out 1 by 3 10 to the power of 6 meter per second we want straight away we have got it simple provided you know this formula this formula is quite key for this similarly find out v2 v2 is going to be equal to put this formula 2 into m into u1 what is u1 it is 1 by 3 
you know, 10 to the power of 6, right, divided by, sorry, what is u1, u1 is here, I am sorry, it is just 10 to the power of 6, divided by m plus 2m, so what is the thing, it is 2 by 3, 10 to the power of 6, meter per second, that is v2. The whole thing has become very very simple because of the formula that we have known and we are able to do this one. Otherwise it's going to be really tough. But we have since we know the formula, we have straight away substituted in the formula. Please do that always. That will be very very helpful for you. We will go to the next question, question number 37. Right? So, that also quite closely, it looks like that, that we can try to solve in that same direction. Question number 37. A ball of 2.4 kg suffers an elastic collision. So the same formula again applies here also. Elastic collision with another ball of B at rest. So M2 is going to be called a question mark. We don't know what is M2. The next one is. But U2 is 0. Look at this one. U2 is 0. After collision ball A continues to move with the same speed with the speed of 1.5 of its original speed. So u1 is going to be equal to u and v1 is going to be equal to 1 by 5 of u. That's what's given here. Look at this. After collision of body A, this is A, this entire is A, continues to move, continues moving in the same direction with the speed of 1.5 of its original speed. Original speed is u means the v2, the final velocity of this same first body is 1 by 5 of this one. And uh, find the mass of ball b. This is question mark. Right? So, we can go back to the same formula itself and we can try to find out how the formula will work in that specific condition of when we have both the bodies, the one of the body is initially at rest. Right? So, the same condition it will applies here. This is the same condition here. Alright? Now, how to find out? We need to find out the value of V2 and V1. Anything you can do it. So, Go ahead with only u1 itself. u1 itself you can find out. So v1 is going to be equal to m1 minus m2 into u1 upon m1 plus m2. So that's going to be equal to m1 is 2.4 minus m2 into u1. u1 is u. And what is v1? v1 is 1 by 5 of u divided by m1 plus m2. So this whole thing it cancelled out. You can take this one to the next side. So it's going to be 2.4 plus m2 is going to be equal to 2.4 minus m2. Alright. So it is just to shift both this one and then you will get the answer here right but here before doing this it is 1 by 5 this 1 by 5 is still sticking around okay try to find out this one m2 you will get it you will easily get it m2 please try to find out this one okay we will go to question number 38 38 is the last question and 39 and 40 please don't do it we are not going to do this one Right, so 38th question a mass m1 is 30, 30 kilograms moving with a initial velocity of 18 meter per second collides with m2 is 90 kg moving at a speed of u2 is 14.4 meter per second basic things are given and this is opposite in direction it is opposite in direction, so you get a minus sign also. Right? The collision is elastic and head-on. 
okay it is an initial kinetic energy and final kinetic energy same find the velocity of each mass after collision so we need to find out v1 is going to be equal to v2 is going to be equal to this one has total expression whole expression will come m1 plus m2 plus m1 plus m2 what is the initial part of it m1 minus m2 into what is this one it's going to be u1 and 2 m2 u2 right so m1 m2 u1 and this is also given there and everything is given there m2 is given there u2 is given there everything is given you can easily find out similarly what will be this one m2 minus m1 into u2 upon m1 plus m2 plus 2 into m1 u1 upon m1 plus m2 everything is given there you can just straight away substitute you will get the answer please do this one all right all right children i think i have done all of them you got to just finish some of the little little part i have just left out i hope you got a quite a good idea about the entire numericals we will have a test on friday try to prepare yourself for that and um, there is a part of the numerical which is there till 56 we did we are done till 56 so and 57 58 59 those things you can leave it and 60 61 you can leave it okay so we have just tried to finish only till 56 that's enough all the children all the best thank you